Okay, we're live, but we have zero followers so far. <laughs> so. Good morning. <laughs> it is morning in D.C. at the National Museum of American History on the Mall at the Smithsonian. I am Catherine Ott, curator. I work on the history of disability, and we're doing this Periscope as part of disability, hashtag disability stories all day because July is the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And uh, uh, disability rights are civil rights. I, I am my own uh, art, uh, audiovisual aid, yes. <laughs> so um, Aaron is behind the camera, Aaron Blasco, who's our social media person here at the museum. I brought out some random objects to share with you. We will begin with this really gnarly, interesting artificial lower limb from the Revolutionary War period. Uh, it's a peg leg style. Do it yourself, which is what most things were in that era. That's like 1790s, somewhere around there. Part of our collection. Um, I also have, in more modern times, a Braille and Speak, which few people use now. It used to be popular in the 70s and 80s. It's kind of a mini computer for people who read Braille. And it has, um, you type in the braille cells, there's six, six uh, dots in a braille cell, mm -hmm. and then it speaks to you. What, it's like a note taker for the people on the go who want to remember stuff, and it speaks back to you. People used to use it in class or for shopping lists, things like that. Um, so that one. <laughs> Then, in honor of the ADA, is this great? Is that right to left? Am I doing it the right direction? That's perfect. Okay, great. It says ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, to boldly go where everyone else has gone before. A, a clever reference to Star Trek. Um, also, since we're in the anniversary of World War One, I, I brought two objects that are related to rehabilitation, which becomes a, a field out of World War I and all of the disabled soldiers who were trained. This is a watch fob that's beaded by a disabled uh, soldier, World War I era, and this is macrame, which many people remember from the revival of macrame as a craft back in the 60s and 70s, but it, it actually has a much longer history. This is World War I. Um, a, a beautiful macrame bag, tiny knots, as part of s skill building and getting your muscle tone back um, and agility, World War One era. And the last object I have, are there, is anybody having questions? Not and yet, but in? some people say cool and awesome. Ah, all right. So when I first started working here, 15, no, actually 19 years ago, maybe, or 20, no, 19. Um, I would go through cabinets to, to see what we had in the collections and medical history because we have such awesome stuff and I would open drawers and random things and one of the, we also have a great collection of what's in this box. Um, I, it's too bad I, you can't ask directly because I can say, what's in this box? <laughs> um, so I opened one of these and found artificial eyes. These are all glass from the 19th century. Most eyes today are made of methyl methyl acrylic or plastic. But then you can see they're right and left for um, directional, <laughs> for your eyes. Um, they're all, yes, they are all blue, which in a subtle way may, gives them race. Um, they're not custom made. You would go into a shop and just select one that somewhat matches the color of the eye that remains. Um, to remove this eye, there are uh, medical textbooks that say, oh, use a knitting needle to get under the edge of it. I know people are making faces at me. I speak the truth. <laughs> you would use a, a knitting needle or some object that was small and somewhat pointed to get under it to pop it out because it just stayed on with suction 
Um, and, the, and for glass eyes, the recommendation was if you take it out, have a pillow under you, so if it drops, it of course doesn't shatter. Um, They'd like to know how that got to be in the collection. Did someone donate that or? Well, this particular um, object was donated to us back in the 90s. The vast majority of our artifacts are given to us by people who want to document history. They understand the importance of knowing what other people have done. We have a really good artificial eye collection. <laughs> Not to brag about something nobody really is interested in except me, but we do have a great collection of artificial eyes. <laughs> is that the same kind that's still used today, or you were saying there's a lot of... Um, it's, they're, they're really different designs today. It, well, materials have changed. Their eyes are mostly made of plastic, methyl methyl mm -hmm. acrylic, but also there are, there's a uh, alpha hydroxy, no, what is it? hydroxyapatite, which is, a because um, these eyes you need a globe to fit it on, mm. often you lose the vitreous, as uh, the humor as part of the injury, mm. so the, there are materials that recreate, um, and they're bio biodegradable, or they integrate into the human body, and then the artificial eye sits on top of it, but yeah, they're in, they look the same because eyes have not evolved <laughs> into something else. Um, and another thing about plastic eyes and glass eyes also is that the tears you naturally have accumulate on the surface and cause like accretion, so you need to get it buffed once in a while. Take your eye in for a buffering or buffing. <laughs> So they're curious about your background. Did you ever think that you'd be an expert on artificial eyes? How did that happen, and yeah. did you ever envision that happening to you? <laughs> oh, good, good pun, envisioning. <laughs> so, part well, the eye piece of it is, I opened these boxes and had so many questions, and no one could answer them who was already working here. So I started doing research, and history of medicine was an interest to me, that which is what I got my PhD in because I grew up in Appalachia, mm -hmm. a part of the country where healthcare is pretty pitiful, and pe so people didn't, people had all sorts of physical differences and anomalies and nobody cared. It was just part of who you are. And I wanted a bigger context for understanding that. And that's, that kind of, it was one thing led to another and pulled me deeper in, and then I saw these boxes of eyes and wondered what. 